Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me briefly say, uh, then I'll get into it later in the video, that I believe that IBF flyweight champion Amnat Ruinrong is the perfect opponent for Zhou Shimeng. I believe Shimeng beats him and takes his title. But understand that I'm a skeptic of the two-time Olympic gold medalist, right, who is now 33 years old, and who, in my opinion, lacks some things that other fighters in the division have. Right? So, I'm picking Shiming to win the fight. That doesn't mean that I feel that he's the best at flyweight. Now, let me back up a little bit. And let's just talk about the culture of boxing for a second. Right? Understand, in boxing, because the fighters fight so infrequently, often the promoters don't quite know what they have, right? In fact, let's be a bit more cynical than that. Sometimes I believe some people in the entourage do see the flaws, but they also see the cash cow status of the fighter. And what you have is literally a culture that feeds on itself, where most of the people in the entourage drink the Kool-Aid. They actually start believing that the fighter is the best in the division. Right now, let's just go through how it works. Right, You're a promoter and you have a fighter who, for whatever reason, is a fan favorite. Maybe he's picked up an Olympic gold medal. Right? Maybe he had a fight that was televised, in which he got a spectacular-looking knockout. Not necessarily showed a lot of boxing brilliance, but he got a spectacular knockout that looked good on film. Maybe your fighter is the kind of guy who visits hospitals, right? You know, talks about issues, you know, attends political rallies, is against things that you're against, right? Domestic violence, um, you know, abuse of minors, right? Maybe this guy is the kind of guy who is just tailor-made for the social position he's in. In other words, you know, you want to believe that the champion is a man of high character, and you know that this fighter is a guy of high character, Right? Or maybe the fighter's just fun and entertaining. Right? You know, sometimes you get both. You get Ali opposing the Vietnam War and actually at the same time saying rhymes, floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee. Right? People are attracted to guys like this. Now, you're the promoter and you understand that this means money. This means money. Now let's dig deeper. Let's say that you're the fighter. Understand the people around you are telling you how great you are. Aren't they? On the stage you're on, let's say it's amateur fighting at the Olympics. You're the biggest man on that stage. Why shouldn't you think that you're going to be the biggest man on the professional stage? Right? Who's the person who's actually going to really critique what you're doing and tell you that parts of your game aren't world class? Let me get one step further. Let's say you have a 
compassionate trainer who wants you as motivated as possible. You know, that trainer might focus on things you can fix, right? Let's say your guard is low. You know, hey, raise the guard. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you, you know, are too close and too much in range. Hey, take a step back. Those are things that can be fixed. The trainer might look at you and might realize that you don't have elite hand speed. Right? That's something that can't be fixed. The trainer might look at you and realize you're not an elite athlete. Right? This isn't the amateurs where you're just fighting a handful of rounds. Now it's the pros. Right? And if you're thinking about being champion, you know, you have to somehow figure out how to navigate 12 round fights now. Right? Well, well just understand even trainers in the know might not break the news to you that you aren't world class in some areas, areas that the trainer knows he can't change. Right? Let's face it. If you're a cash cow, everybody's getting paid while you're on top. Who in that pipeline is going to stand up and say, hey, wait a moment. You know, you're not the best in the division, right? In many cases, the answer is no one. So what you have is a mutual delusion society, right? Where people then start hyping a fighter and lose track of the fact that while the fighter is very good, especially at being a cash cow, He's not so good that he's the best in the division. Now, let me be blunt here. I'm a skeptic of Zoshime. I understand this opinion isn't the popular opinion in the boxing community. This guy's unbeaten. He's well-connected. His trainer is Freddie Roach. He's a technician in the ring, right? He's a master at timing, right? He relies on timing more than hand speed, volume, or power, right? He's like an engineer. He's looking for angles and moments, He's the kind of guy who knows spacing. So let's say the opponent's where I am. He knows to bounce a little bit off at the side and get off combinations while you're not ready, while you're turning or you're unprepared. He knows how to work you over at certain angles. Right? Make no mistake. He's an expert fighter. He's above average. Here are the problems I see with him. Number one is he has a noticeable, and it's noticeable, lack of power. In other words, you know, you're in the ring and you're not fearing his power like you would fear the power of Giovanni Segura, who's in the same division. Or like you would fear the power of Mac Williams Arroyo, who's in the division. Zosheming doesn't have that level of power or that level of explosiveness. He simply doesn't, right? It's a little bit surprising because it's not like the guy is up on his toes moving around the ring, right? You're not seeing great hand speed and a guy who's made a decision to lose a little power off his punches in order to be a stylist in the ring. Right? Rather, Zhou Shiming is somewhat flat-footed in the ring. Right? Not a lot of bells and whistles. He has an economy of movement. 
But even with that economy of movement, he doesn't have a lot of power. Let me say, too, as you watch him, he stands a bit upright. Right now, with a guy who doesn't have a lot of movement, you really wonder what happens if an opponent can get inside on him and start digging to his body because in my opinion his body is there to get hit right let me say that he also likes to pace himself right when I see a fighter who's cruising along in second gear I really wonder what happens if somebody forces him out of that comfort zone, forces him to get to fourth gear, right? Will Zhou Shiming's fighting construct hold up? I wonder what happens if he's in the ring with Brian Valoria, who I would take over him. And Valoria raises the temperature in the room, starts shooting a jab, starts moving around the ring a bit. Right, moving more than Zhou Shiming. Right, Valoria, same division. Right, I, I know Valoria can handle fourth gear. I don't know that with 33 year old Zhou Shiming. Right, so the questions I have right, are can he handle a body puncher? Open question. Can he handle a mover with a jab? Open question. He's such a technician that sometimes he doesn't even move when a guy throws a punch on him. He knows the punch is going to be short. The problem is you have a fight style. We'll call it the Jorge Arce Ken Norton fight style where the punches are coming at odd angles right the guy is looking one way and he's throwing a looping punch out here and stuff like that can the very precise Zhou Shiming handle an imprecise but hyper aggressive opponent I think that's an open question right let me say this too Shiming's defense, right? The pros, again, are much longer fights than the amateurs. Shiming, if you look at the number of pro fights he's had, it's not that many, folks. It's less than 10. To me, at times, Shiming has mental lapses in the ring. I want you to revisit the Kokichian fight. You're going to see that Ray Mancini, <clears throat> who was one of the color commentators that night, <clears throat> correctly called that Shemaine gets dropped in that fight. Dropped. Right? He comes in with his hands low. He gets caught. He gets dropped. The positioning of his hands is curious. It was as if his defense came and went, I'm guessing. Shiming was an amateur for so long, he can go through a shorter amateur fight in his sleep. But when the fight stretches out a bit, things start to fall apart. So then Shiming inexplicably starts getting involved in shootouts. His defense inexplicably fades at times. Right? Now let's talk about why the IBF champion. Ruen Rung is tailor-made for him. Just understand that, number one, the fight's in Macau where Shiming is king. Understand neither of these fighters <clears throat> has a lot of power. So the fight almost certainly, from at least Shiming's perspective, is going to go the distance. Right, a fight that goes the distance in Macau involving Zhou Shiming is likely to go to Zhou Shiming. Let's just say Shiming is the house fighter. He'll be the person that most of the crowd is cheering for. 
If he's standing at the end, he'll likely get awarded the decision. Right? That's the first thing. The second thing is, believe it or not, Ruen Rong is actually older than Shemeng. In other words, you wonder how Shemeng would do, since he's a measured veteran, without a lot of professional experience, who stands upright and likes to fight in second gear. You wonder how he would do against a young lion. But he's not facing a young lion here. He's facing a guy who, quite frankly, is 35 years old right? He's facing a guy who he can control the pace on. Understand, Ruen Rong is a counterpuncher. You can slow down the fight with counterpunchers by not giving them a lot to counter. In other words, this is a fight set up where Shemeng can stay in second gear. It's not like Ruen Rong is going to get on his front foot and force Shiming into fourth gear. Right? Ruen Rong likes to fight a measured fight. Let me say this too. I thought Ruen Rong lost to Mac Williams Arroyo. Right? Another fighter I think would give Shiming a hard fight. Right? Arroyo is an explosive puncher. Aggressive. The kind of guy who likes to come forward and throw bombs, who has a nice uppercut to boot, right? I've placed the video of that fight in my YouTube favorites folder here for all to see. I thought that was a robbery. I thought Arroyo should be wearing the IBF belt at flyweight right now. Well, let me just say, to get by that fight, Right? A fight in which Ruenrong was the house fighter. Right? The fight was in a very Ruenrong uh, place. Right? Just to understand that to get by that fight, Ruenrong hugged Arroyo to death. The holding was clearly excessive. Ruen Rong had to hold to survive in that fight. Understand, that's exactly the kind of tactic that Freddie Roach fighters are able to defeat. Because Freddie Roach will have his fighter bounce, right? Be off at the side. Make it hard for Ruen Rong to hold Shemeng. Right? Keep in mind, Shiming's a master at timing and precision. So he's not going to be standing right in front of, we'll call him Amnat, right? It's Amnat Ruenrong. Amnat's easier to pronounce. He's not going to be fighting and um, standing in front of Amnat long enough to be held like McWilliams Arroyo was held. Right? Understand, even with the excessive holding, I thought Arroyo still won the fight. Right? He lost a split decision. But the point is, Shiming here has a guy who's measured in the ring, who doesn't have a lot of power, and who's going to want a paced fight. So this will give Shiming an opportunity to literally bounce around him prevent him from holding and hit him with counters, right? Ruen Rong isn't a hooker. He's kind of a cutie, right? He's a guy in the ring trying to look smooth. But understand, he goes front and back. Not a lot of lateral movement. I don't think he has the stamina to move and pump a jab for 12 rounds. Understand, too, that like Shiming, who got dropped in the Caucasian fight, Amnat got dropped by McWilliams Arroyo, and he got dropped hard in that sixth round, right? His chin 
is an open question. Now, these men met in the amateurs. Understand, Ruen Rong is the perfect opponent for Shiming because they fought three times in the amateurs and Shiming beat him the last two. In other words, these guys know each other. This is Shiming against a guy he's beaten multiple times in the amateurs. So what I'm expecting is I'm expecting Shiming to have a little bit of problems early when Ruen Rong comes in and looks cute and looks stylish. But then I'm expecting that to fade. So I'm expecting Shiming to literally pick Ruen Rong apart. I wouldn't even be surprised if Shiming is able to close the show in the later rounds, even though he doesn't have a lot of power. Because I got the feeling if Ruen Rong wasn't allowed to excessively hold McWilliams Arroyo, he would have been stopped in that fight. Right? So, I'm picking Shiming to win the IBF World Flyweight title. Now, that said, I would take Giovanni Segura and I would take Brian Valoria over him, right? Simply because I think he's more of a technician than an athlete, right? I think his lack of power is a concern. I think that a guy with more aggression and movement who can get him out of his second gear comfort zone, force him to fight in third or fourth gear, might actually cause him to have mental lapses later in fights and might be able to stop him. Right? So, I know there are many views out there, and I know it's popular right now to look at a two-time Olympic gold medalist and say, oh, he's the future in the division. I suspect that there are a few people in his own entourage who have their doubts. There's no way Freddie Roach is looking at this guy's lack of punching power and thinking that he has a future Manny Pacquiao on his hands. Right? Let's just say Shiming looks like he was a great amateur. I'm predicting here that he's going to have problems as he goes forward in his professional career. I think he wins his next fight. View me as a skeptic of his after that, as he fights other opposition. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for us here online. Visit us at Dwyer Sports Betting. Com. Thanks for stopping by.